now let's just use what we deduced because we now know quantitatively what each one of these terms is. So let's write that the Carnot efficiency is equal to, I'm going to put the minus sign out in front just to remind ourselves that we have to convert negative work to a positive number for efficiency. And now I'm going to put in each one of these work terms from our previous work. So I have minus n r t and this is t hot so i've got the t sub h and then i have a logarithm of the final over the initial volume that's v2 over v1 and we're going to see that we have to keep careful track of each one of these the next term is our adiabatic term for leg two that's n times c sub v times t cold minus t hot then we have another term for the isothermal leg that's minus n r t cold times log v4 over v3 and then our final term is plus n c sub v t hot minus t cold for that final adiabatic leg now we know that what we put into the system is the heat added at high temperature that's the heat resulted from the fact that we purchased gasoline and exploded it in each of these cylinders to drive the piston down. So that says something very important because I'm putting Q into the hot side through an isothermal trajectory. But we also know that for an isotherm, delta U equaling Q plus W is equal to zero. So that means that Q is equal to minus W. Aha! That means that Q in is equal to minus work along that first leg. Well, that turns out to be profoundly valuable because now I can substitute N R T hot times a logarithm of V2 over V1 because that's the work along that isothermal path. All right, so now let's insert that into the denominator. That's N R T hot log V2 over V1. But now we look at this and we see there are some remarkable cancellations. The first thing is that our two adiabatic legs are equal to one another but opposite in sign. So we can remove both of those and we can drop all negative signs and we have N R T hot times log V2 over V1 plus N R T cold times log V4 over V3 divided by N R T hot logarithm V2 over V1. The next step is that we recognize we can do some more cancellation. And as we will see when we proceed to the end, the calculation of the efficiency of a Carnot cycle has a greater cancellation than almost any other calculation in thermodynamics because now we can drop the NR out of each term and we're left with T hot times log V2 over V1 plus T cold times log V4 over V3 divided by hot times in log V2 over V1. Now, it's tempting to cancel out the log of V2 over V1 and leave it divided into log of V4 over V3, but what else can we do? So let's take a look at the first law again. It always comes to our aid. We can write that in differential form as du is equal to plus dw. Well, it's an adiabatic leg, so dq equals to zero, and du is equal to dw. But I know immediately how to write that. That's n c sub v dt, and du is equal to minus pressure times dv. Aha! The perfect gas law allows us to write this minus 
N R T D V over V. Now we look at that and we say, well, what progress does that represent? Well, it represents something very important because now let's divide this through by temperature. That gives us N C sub V D T divided by the temperature is equal to minus N R D V over V. We know how to integrate that. So we have N C sub V, the integral from T initial, T final, DT over T is equal to minus N R times the integral from V initial to V final, DV over V. That's remarkable. That allows us to relate ratios of temperature to volume. Because if I do the integral, that's N C sub V log of T final over T initial is identically equal to minus N R log V final over V initial. And this is an example of how thermodynamics in combination with the perfect gas law provides extremely important relationships that actually are not obvious until we work them out explicitly.